Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Elseworlds Exchange. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. So today we're going to be talking about the DC Black Label line. We're going to talk about what it is, what it could be, and maybe come up with a couple of Black Label pitches ourselves. Uh, oh, welcome. Yeah. This is a Joel idea. You were like, hey, let's talk about Black Label a little bit. I think we promised to do this at some point. Is that the idea? I'm sure we did. But I'm sure we also thought Black Label would be further along than it actually is now. We certainly did. Uh, so if you're wondering, like so many people, what exactly is DC's Black Label? You might have even seen a couple of Black Label books already ready batman damned black label book uh batman white knight which was just a simple non elseworlds elseworlds dc related series now dc black label book what does that mean well according to the 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 the, the horse's mouth take a look at what dc says and if you want to read along with me check the description below this video there's a link to dc's official rundown of black label DC Black Label is a brand new publishing imprint dedicated to giving premier writers and artists the chance to expand on DC's unrivaled characters with unique, standalone stories set outside DC continuity, which is already not true. Three Jokers mm -hmm. is coming out. It's a Black Label book. It will directly impact DC continuity. Yep. The, the imprint will be DC's home for classy, collectible superhero stories aimed at a mature reader looking to be challenged and surprised as they are entertained with an eye for the unique and remarkable. That is a non-sentence. That sentence says nothing. Also, we're letting Azzarello and Miller write books in this, so it's not going to be classy either. Not at all. Uh, in that regard, each DC Black Label series will have a unique format and a release schedule designed to best serve the story. <laughs> Late books. <laughs> and the creative oh. vision. Uh, with the first of the previously announced DC Black Label titles set to debut later this year, all three of them delayed until 2019. Those yep. being Batman Damned, number one, September 19th. That came out. Yep. Bi-monthly three issues. Batman Damned, number two. I don't think it's coming out before the end of the year. Neither do I. Uh, Superman Year One, number one, set to come out November 2018. No. I looked that up. Apparently, they're expecting it to come out in September of 2019. Yep. We, you see, we had to push them back because of the, the big dick shenanigans, so we had to take a bunch of time to erase all the penises that we drew. Right. And the other history of the DC Universe number one set to come out this month. Now, who knows? Which is a shame, because that was probably the one that I was the most excited about. Right. There have been a number of other announced books. I know that Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo are doing their own Batman <coughs> book, which if you want to know more about that, and in fact, find out what the first issue looks like, check <coughs> out our interview with Scott Snyder over on the Elseworlds Exchange playlist. Check that out and listen to it. It's an amazing, phenomenal two-hour-long uh, mm -hmm. you know, saga, so check that out. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more that they had pitched or that they said were coming. So let's try to suss out exactly what the hell DC Black Label was supposed to be. And what it's going to become. And what it probably is right now. So what do you think, Joel? What, it, what Can you parse that that whole, can you square that circle, parse that sentence? What exactly <laughs> are they tr were they trying to say DC Black Label was? I mean, I think what they were trying to say is what they always say every so often, and that is, hey, these ain't your grandpappy's comics no more. These are classy for adult books. No, no, no more of that shiny heroes in spandex. You can put this on your bookshelf, and you can call this a graphic novel if you want, which is fine. I loved uh, Marvel Max, and that's basically what that was. Yeah, that's true. But also, uh, weren't DC books basically that before when they were put out in prestige formats or in graphic novel? I mean, what is The Dark Knight Returns if not one of them classy books they're talking about? Also, most if not all, in fact, I think every single one of them, star superheroes. Yes, absolutely. There's really no outside the boxing of it. There's, there's the book that I think is supposed to be more about the Amazons, but they put Wonder Woman's name on it. So, yes. you know, I remember that there was going to be a Wonder Woman book. I think that's probably coming out now. Who knows? But the other thing was, as I understand it, the black label is supposed to be a, a mature reader's line, more yes. or less just, it was going to be, it's going to have brevity three to seven issues it was going to be self-contained, and it was going to be for mature readers. So How, when you how see, very Vertigo-esque of them. Right, except not Vertigo, because they brought back Vertigo. In fact, Sandman's celebrating its 30-year anniversary this January. Uh, Vertigo is a totally different animal, and I want to make sure we distinguish this, because Vertigo is its own thing, and I don't want DC Black Label to become Vertigo, because yeah. Vertigo has kind of the pastiche 
that the DC Black Label description kind of wanted to achieve without yeah. any, like, effort or grounding. Like, there's no proof... It's true. There's no proof that DC Black Label is great and deep and mature because there's only been one book. Yep, and a bunch of other books that they've re-released, which that's what confused me. Hey, we'll boost our name cachet by taking a bunch of books that people already know and love that are never out of circulation and you're never going to have a hard time finding anyway, and we'll call them Black Label now. Right, exactly. Uh, now, that is another thing. I mean, like, it used to be that there was an Elseworlds line, and Elseworlds was a very different kind of idea. Elseworlds did not try to be self-contained. I mean, it was self-contained, but it wasn't like... Oh, it, it's only going to be this one thing. It's going to be Elseworlds were what if stories in the DC universe, and they brought those back recently too. That uh, Nightwing New Order book that was an Elseworld book. They proudly declared that as an Elseworld book, and now they don't seem to be talking about Elseworld books anymore. No, Batman White Knight was, for all intents and purposes, an Elseworlds book. Now it's a Black Label book. Similarly, we just got a bunch of uh, new news about re-releasing the Dark Knight Returns. That's going to be a Black Label book as well. Now, I love The Dark Knight Returns, but how many times can you re-release that book? I'm pretty sure everyone owns a copy by now. Who wants a copy? If they don't, you can easily get a copy anywhere at any time, in any condition, with any yep. version you can get. And once again, by the way, I looked at the specs on the Black Label Dark Knight Returns release. It's just another printing. I mean, like, if you look at the White Knight edition... I don't even, if, if I were like a new reader or if I were an old reader or a lapsed reader and I pick this up, I won't, I don't know what the hell Black Label is. It's true. And here's another question. Are they paying full price for these? Because like you said, if I want a copy of Dark Knight, if I want a copy of All-Star Superman, I can get it at a good price. Right. Why would I buy a new version? Like If you're not going to put anything new in it. No, and there's nothing in here, by the way, that says what Black Label is that gives you any, like, depth or information about White Knight or about Sean Murphy's approach to the character, about where it's coming from, whether it takes place outside continuity or not. I mean, obviously it does when you get into it, but, like, yeah. if you don't know anything, if you're talking about these fabled new readers that you're trying to get into with your graphic novels, you know, people are going to read this and go, there's two Harleys in the main yeah, universe? Was... No. Or not, Maybe. I mean, we don't know. Sometimes. You know, yeah. so, but I want to establish, like, Vertigo's own thing. Vertigo was, for all intents and purposes, not superhero related um, outside DC continuity, although that's sort right. of shifted and melded and become this blurry line. But boy, did it. Uh, th thank you, Swamp Thing and Constantine. Yeah, Swamp Thing, Hellblazer. Uh, the only one that, like, the, the other one from that, that group that I say, or Sandman also. Sandman's part of the universe now. Sandman was a major thing that took place. I mean, like well, not Sandman, but Dream, uh, Daniel Hall Dream in Dark Knight uh, Metal. Yeah. So yeah, that happened, and it can't unhappen. Also, Carter Hall is a descendant of the original Sandman, who's also that wrapped too. up in the Sandman mythology. That's also part of Vertigo. Vertigo is no longer like outside continuity, not related to DC, even though for the most part, most of it is. Uh, heck, uh, Jonah Hex, too, had a whole Vertigo line, although he had magic powers in that, and we don't reference that part of his history. <laughs> right, but I mean, we also had Preacher. Preacher's also another huge Vertigo book. Um, in so far, con uh, right now, not in continuity, though we have seen references, I think, in... A, in Numerous. In, uh, to the Saint of Killers. Yes, Jonah Hex at the end of the Palmiotti run is like, yeah, hey, and that Saint of Killers guy. Yeah, like what? You're gonna just do that now? Okay. And Palmiotti's like, no one's reading this fucking book, but Joel, hey Joel, hope you like that reference. I did, Jimmy, thank you. <laughs> I did, thanks, yeah. No, and that's pretty much how it feels. Um, so Black Label was supposed to be more or less like a between the lines Vertigo. It's like it's like a Vertigo Elseworlds hybrid. Yeah. It was going to be you're the superheroes you know, but minus the continuity plus mm -hmm. the prestige. And we can get away with more because you know these are going to be aimed directly at adults, although that's kind of changing around too. Right, and deliberately and kind of meticulously mature, or at least mature in terms of readers and in terms of rating. What, um, what people call mature and what is actually mature is really a conversation I think we should have for another day because usually when people try and sell you something as like, oh, it's mature. Oh, so there's going to be a lot of titties and blood in it? You bet. Right. And 
they really like kind of tried, I think, to set the stage or the tone for Black Label with Batman Damned because of the context and the content of the first issue. Yeah, ooh, religion, we're being blasphemous. Ooh, penises, look at them. Right, uh, and if you want to get into a full discussion about Batman Damned and its implications, you should actually go check out our Comic Line episode where we talk all about that. Uh, by the way, personally endorsed by one of the people who worked on that book. Oh. So, uh, that being said, Black Label was supposed to be a hybrid of Vertigo and Elseworlds, kind of, unless they wanted to also be an imprint to publish some of the uh, more mature-themed or the, some of the more adult-oriented DC books of yesteryear. Which which also gets weird, too, because it's like, well, weren't you weren't you already trying to, like, push weird envelopes over in your young animal imprint? Is that asleep right now? Right. Is Doom Patrol, is Grant Morrison's Doom Patrol a black label book? Should it be? I... I mean, like, first of all, if you're going to publish anything made from, like, from 30 years ago that pushed the envelope under Black Label, then yes, the damn thing yeah. should be a Black Label book. And in fact, it's actually not a bad idea because no. most of the time, if you want to get Doom Patrol from Grant Morrison, you got to, like, you got to get the omnibus. Yeah, you do. It'd be kind of cool if they published them kind of like indisposable, inexpensive trades like these and just went like Doom Patrol Volume 1 through 12, you know? Um, who, who owns the rights to the Invisibles? Because I know that's getting turned into a show soon. Is that his own thing? Does Morrison own all the rights to that? I think he does. I have to assume he does. Grant Morrison is shrewd and he, he knows his business. Um, so we talked about what Black Label was supposed to be. Because of the fallout from Batman Dam's controversy, and by the way, you know, suffice it to say, the controversy was, for the most part, prudish and simple. Yeah. Uh, it was a nothing controversy, but a bigger blowback of that is to see how easily DC Comics kowtow, bowed up, and just, you know, gave up right, right out of the gate. Well, a lot of pressure came from outside, came from the, I mean, and, and the reality is, like, I understand that, and it also doesn't bode well for the future of corporately owned media. Like, no, if you but, think about how, like, Disney, right? I get it. Okay, no one can smoke. Nobody can bang in a Marvel book anymore. Okay, that sucks. Like, that sucks. But you didn't erase the comics that had that in them. No. And it, it is somewhat limiting because it means you have to have a list of things that you can't put into your books anymore. And, and also, they're toying with, you know, uh, like the new Punisher book is for mature readers, and they're toying with Marvel Knights. You'd be like, well, what if we put a little extra in here? Would people read this? Would there be an audience for and this? So it seems that Disney doesn't really care about Marvel Comics at all. So no. Marvel can pretty much probably do whatever they want so long as it isn't so big or so impressive or so uh, controversial that it will get the attention of late night talk show hosts. So, so long as it's not Star Wars Battlefront 2, where it's like, okay, you may have actually damaged the brand on right. this one. Well, as long as we don't see Spider-Man's penis, I think Disney will pretty much just leave Marvel Comics alone. Yeah, that's that's um, how it seems. And again, too, you mentioned that, you know, external uh, outside force was what made them do it. Really, it didn't seem like anyone was upset. It just seemed like people were making fun of them. And that's what caused them to stop. Like, we don't want to be made fun of. This is a very serious imprint. Batman's penis is very serious. I don't know if it was, I don't know what the impetus behind Warner Brothers backlash was. But it, for me, I was actually, I remember when they announced Black Label, they were like, oh, this is going to be great. Because Warner Brothers is not trying to be kid friendly family friendly it's not a brand that is that says this is for children sure warner brothers is synonymous with looney tunes but looney tunes has always been a little bit risque and a little bit more it has envelope, pu envelope pushing so you know well, old bugs bunnies were pretty edgy for their time exactly now was it as you know for bugs bunny like whip it out uh, not so much <laughs> but like i digress Warner Brothers is not trying to put a spit polish on their brand the way that Disney always does. Although um, arguably maybe they are now because it's like Aquaman is a little softer and friendlier and Shazam is a little softer and friendlier now and those are their next two big movie projects. True. Uh, but that being said, I remember being so excited by what Warner Brothers was letting DC do and the second that any backlash was found of any kind, th there was like these marching orders from, down, from, from on high that just said quash this, delay that, nothing can, you can't do X, Y, Z. We need to look closer at this. God only knows if, like, they hired a new person to, like, Ooh. comb over every page, if, Ooh. like, now Black Label Books or DC Books in general have to go through some Warner Brothers corporate filter, if, like, there's a, a list of characters that can't 
fall under the purview of Black Label or Black Label related books or media. Either I, way. I actually thought of that with some of my pitches, actually. I kept a little of that in mind, actually. Oh, good, because we are going to get to pitches in a little bit, but we're still trying to like hash out exactly what Black Label is, where it's going, and what it could be, so that it fits into the mold of what we're trying to accomplish. It's like an autopsy, and there's only been one issue. It's a post-mortem on Black Label, and the damn thing has only one issue under it. You, well, you, you tripped at the finish line, guys. You had one job. Well, that said, the, like... The start line, not even the finish line. Yeah, I mean, that said, uh, I think we are getting Black... I think we are getting getting Batman Dam number two pretty soon. Uh, I think it's before 2019, but it was supposed to come out months ago. I think and, the book was supposed I, to be done by now. And, and I only thought that first issue was just okay, too. Looked really nice, but I just thought it was okay is the, the truly thing. fun thing to me. Yeah, you know what? Like, if you've ever read one Brian Azzarello Batman story, you've read every single Brian Azzarello story. So, like, if you know what to expect from this, if you read Joker, you know exactly what this is. Joker, is that a Black Label book? It should be. It really so, should it is it is uh no, Batman Noel. I mean, they have the same art style. It's the same so damn universe, they... practically. Uh, that, but that was the most interesting part of Damned is a bunch of fans in their head can being like, "Well, this kind of looks the same, and it's written by the same guy. So are these in the same universe? They are now, right?" Uh, and I think that's fine as long as you know, because there's there's not much in Batman Noel that really changes the kind. There's there's literally three books in the continuity of the like of that. And then, by the way, I think Bermejo wrote Noel. Yes, he did. So it's not even Azarello. So Azarello could say, like, no. Um, but either way, uh, the point I'm trying to make here is we're looking at Black Label now, and uh, Black Label has become something else. What is Black Label now? And I think basically it is a mature reader's imprint. It is mm. basically a TVMA sticker that they put yeah. on the book. Honestly, I yeah. think that's what it is now. Yeah, that's, that's pretty fair. And even then... Uh, I mean, we'll have to get more books to really see what it is, but it's like, will they even live up to that TVMA thing? Or is my theory true? Did they take all this extra time off because they needed to erase all the dicks? I think that's exactly what it was. I think that they needed the extra time off because they didn't plan, which is a problem that every comic book company has. Every time they want to roll out with a new initiative, they know they they must, and it, it must be kind of exciting to work for a comic book company because if you have an idea, six months later, the idea is real. Oh, uh, yeah, you're but, flying by the seat of your pants all the time. Right, but the problem with that also lies in when, uh, like, you hire a AAA writer, and then he wants to do your book, and then everything changes, and now you got to, like, th your whole pitch goes on into the garbage. Like, your book could either be the newest, latest, amazing thing, or then there's, like, a school shooting, and now your book is totally controversial and before it comes out, so we got to table that thing maybe forever. Like, it's very, it's, it's very volatile. Oh, yeah. I, I don't know if you watch BoJack Horseman, but they covered that actually super well a couple seasons ago, but only they did it with the movie industry and just exactly what you're saying. Where it's like sometimes all the planets align and you get all the best creators and then sometimes one thing changes and you're screwed. I think that's exactly what comic books are. I think it's I mean, like it's, when it comes to planning for big things, I think when it comes to events, events, they've at the very least Marvel has figured this out, but they figured out for better or worse, by the way like how to craft and execute an event in which everything and nothing happens all at once. And at the it, end, they really are good at that. Like, and it, it doesn't offend anybody. Like it, it, it'll offend you, the comic book reader, but it won't offend John Q. I don't know what comic books are reading the New York times. It won't offend the guy who's shopping at Walmart who sees those DC books on the lowest shelf underneath all the Yu-Gi-Oh cards I think, by the way, I need to do a whole show about that because I think it failed. Um, I'm I'm cool with that, too. I only got one, and I got it because a fan sent it to me. I never found them. No, I bought uh, the first run. I read them. Most of them were reprints. I could not find, like, much in terms of original story in all of them. It was a, it, like, for me, it was a failure to get me to read more of them. I saw there were more of them now, and I was like, I'm not buying these. It, it very much didn't seem like it was meant for us. It was, again, tr uh, targeting, you know, Joe and Jane six-pack out there. But again, did Joe and Jane six-pack pick them up and enjoy them? I almost feel like we need to kidnap someone from a Walmart who just picked them up for the first time. Be like, tell us what you think. I really need to do, like, an experiment because there's three Walmarts in my general vicinity that I can get to in relative, like, convenience. I should get a post-it note that says, if you saw this, <laughs> take, like, remove me. And put it on the like on the front of like the sixth issue in that stack, uh, and be like, just and just wait. 
I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll fly out to Jersey for a month and we'll we'll get this started. We'll work on this. This will be our, like, uh, what is it, enclosed experiment? What do they call that? Yeah, Where, yeah. Uh, uh, a control, if you will. Yeah, this will be our controlled experiment. We'll work on this one every day. We'll go out to the Walmart and just sit in a panelist van and be like, all right. Anybody when they come buy out with these, the... <laughs> these, these DC books? I don't think so. Um, when we see someone with the DC book, we'll grab them, we'll black bag them like V for Vendetta, pull them in the van, yeah. and then record. And then ask them what they thought. So uh, Black Label, for the, I mean, like you, you seem to agree with me, the idea being that Black Label is more or less just like a, a, a Marvel Max. It's not even an imprint. It's basically just a, a, an excuse to not put a, an actual rating on the book. Yeah, which, again, I never even thought that was much of a problem anyway, but apparently it was. Right. Uh, so the question is, what could Black Label be now in this world of Warner Brothers doesn't want Colbert making fun of Batman? Yeah. Because that's really what it is. I, I really do feel like because of how intrinsically connected Warner Brothers is with DC, Warner Brothers, like... Because they are like a media giant, when they mm. saw other media people making fun of their like flagship characters, they took they, it personally. They shat themselves. Um, so, what is what is black? Like, can can Black Label be salvaged? I think it can be, but I think they're going to have to put a lot of work into it. And also, you're going to have to put out books because right now, you ask me what Black Label is. For me personally, kind of a punchline, because whenever I think about it, all I can think about is Batman's dick and DC Comics tripping over themselves to try and, you know, make it all okay and trying to make it so they don't get made fun of. What kills me, and this is really more about Batman Damned, and I don't want to digress on it too long, but, like, what kills me is what a wasted opportunity all that media exposure was to shine a light on a new imprint they were trying to make money off of. And they what, didn't capitalize. What a wasted opportunity! You know, because Marvel is run by hustlers. Joe Casada was is just a is a is a carnival barking hustler. Yes. Who, by the way, to his credit, dude was on the Tonight Show selling like Batman or Spider Man books. Yes, um, he was. He was he was calling in every Hollywood favor he had. Those Hollywood contacts usually dried up, or they wound up making really really late books or books that never came out, like Daredevil Target. But like, he still got media exposure on these characters. No press Such... is bad press, and they live that Marvel. Exactly. DC had a gr golden opportunity. Colbert's like, Batman's penis, lol. Next week, Jim Lee on Colbert. Next day, Jim Lee on, uh, or Jeff Johns, or anyone like in, in, in some direct involvement with Batman Anyone you can Dan put a camera on. Get Go on. Uh, Colbert, go on. Maybe Colbert doesn't want you. He's like, no, I'm just, I just want to make it a punchline. Fine. Seth Meyers, uh, any other like member of that media, and if not, how about the YouTube community talking yeah. about it and blasting it out as much as you can? But like basically going out there and being like, yeah, you know what, Batman's dick is in this, and you can get it for the low, low price of seven dollars. And like, let me tell you a little about what Black Label actually is, and what we're trying to do. And yeah, mm -hmm. you know what, like it is what what low hanging fruit it is for you to like gravitate towards something that. Europeans have no problem with, but Americans seem to be able to just titter and giggle every time they talk about it. Like, oh it's no, true. I didn't realize that you were born a eunuch or that you were like a Ken doll. Like, I didn't realize that dicks were a problem. Like, yes, yeah, let it's, me... yes, it's Batman, but do you expect to see every issue of Batman with his schlong? No. The fact <laughs> is, like, this book is for adults and it's a different kind of thing. And if you, like, plan that out or if you at the very least try to get in front of it, you could probably have salvaged this line and maybe proven to the people at Warner Brothers that, like, this 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 label has legs. Got, yeah. The third leg, lol, her her. see how easy got, it is to tell these stupid jokes? But, uh... I, I, I'm shocked Azarello didn't get more upset about it because he's a prickly dude who usually shoots off at the mouth about everything. I guess it goes to show how much Azarello actually cared about the project that he didn't even get incensed about it. I gotta tell you, having seen Azarello at New York Comic Con immediately following the Batman Damn controversy, uh, and I believe I saw him also at Baltimore, which was even closer to that, he was miserable. He was a. He, I, <laughs> I, I anticipated Brian Azarello to be a miserable bastard, right? Yeah. He defied expectations when it came to being a miserable a bastard. And from what I understand from people who know him intimately, that was all because of uh, of Batman Damned and the reaction. Right. He was miserable and, like, angry and negative. I want to say, based on his signatures of Batman Damned, he also, like, modified his signature to be like, I don't give a fuck. Like, it's just a line. 
It's not even a na It's not even close to a B or an A. It's just a line. I'm killing you with my pen. That's how angry I am. To me, I like am. this is just useless and worthless to me. Screw you. Bermejo, on the other hand, was just like, just, just ready to fight. <laughs> uh, you know, because he's like, I'm, I'm European. I do this. This is, this is art. And this you is like me. freaked out. It, it, I feel bad about uh, about Azarello in terms of him being like, I was trying to say something, and you just er, the message wasn't even like it wasn't even like you misunderstood it. You weren't even listening. I know. And hey, if you're gonna get mad at Azarello, get mad at him for things he deserves to get mad at for, like killing joke. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, like, well, and we'll, we should talk about Killing Joke in a minute, because I have a thing about that. But before we do, transition to what Black Label should be, let's go into the Super Chats. Kane's World saying, Black Label's becoming a huge disappointment. I like Superman All-Star, but I wouldn't consider that a Black Label. No, that was the All-Star line. Yeah, that was his own thing that came and went in a blink of an Started eye. Started out Super All-Star Superman. Hey, this can do no wrong. All-Star Batman. Oops. Yeah, oops. But to talk about another one, we uh, we screwed up almost right at the starting line. It's true. Uh, what was it? Uh, Theodore Soli Engine helping us out with some Super Chats. Thank you very much, Theodore. Uh, James Robbins, I can't wait to hear your pitches. I know the stories would be dark, but they would be well-written. Take notes, Brian Michael Bendis and Tom King. Being dope, y'all. Thank you so much, man. And Jan Kohler, have to say I thought it was okay to show Batman naked. It's a mature book, so in my mind, yeah. it's okay. Anyway, that's my two cents. Love you guys' show. Thank you, Jan. I, I wonder if it had been anyone else who whipped it out in that comic. Had it been any other character? Had it been anyone but Batman? I wonder if the controversy had been there like as Wouldn't much. Have existed. No, if it was Green Arrow, it wouldn't have happened at all. No. Nope. No. The only way it would have happened is if it was Batman and Superman. But the fact is, Black Label wouldn't have shown that it had cojones if it wasn't Batman. They needed to it's make true. a big splash. And what's so frustrating is, this was it! This was your moment. That was the splash. Like you take any opportunity. Yes, they were pissing and moaning, and they were like making do like awful jokes. But this is the time. And I get. And I guess my my guess is Warner Brothers just hamstrung them and said like, "Don't you talk about anything. Don't you don't you dare make any kind of statement until the books are recalled. Until there's <laughs> no proof that this book exists." It's radio silence on the penis. We have a no talking about penis policy at this company just now. Just Batman's. Just Batman's. Because Jeff Johns allowed. Uh, what was it? Uh, Doctor Manhattan to be naked in the next month. In, in That's Doomsday right. Clock. Which, by and the way, no one talked about that. Good because, and by for me, I'm like good because I don't want anyone to talk about it. I want them to ruin it. I don't want <laughs> Doctor Manhattan to suddenly have underwear. Like <laughs> the only time he should have underwear is when he's on the Minutemen. Is when he's like when he's trying to be in front of a camera and try to be and, human. Right. Like Doctor Manhattan wearing pants is a complete betrayal of the Doctor Manhattan character. Uh, it, it's still kind of like nebulous as to whether Doomsday Clock in and of itself is an affront to Watchmen. We'll see when the book is done. But at this point, the least they could do is leave Dr. Manhattan naked. It's, it's it's funny that, speaking of Doomsday Clock, the new issue came out today. It had the least to do with Watchmen, and it was actually my favorite issue of the series. That's funny. I thought, like, did was it me or is the new Doomsday Clock, like, I read it in maybe, eight, like, 12 minutes. Uh, possibly, yeah. I, read, I, mean, like, it was like, I was like, oh, it's over. And it's done. I, I liked it because it was the most self-contained, and also Firestorm got to do things. Yeah, Firestorm. Or not. Or not, possibly. <laughs> oh, now that would be a real pecker slide. Hey, Firestorm got to do things. No, he didn't. No, that wasn't Firestorm. Um, so, yeah, uh, let's see here. Uh, apparently, Theodore had a comment, but it's, that doesn't come up in the super chat here. Um, so, sorry. Sorry. Um, but I guess I can look for, you know what, uh, Danielle, grab it for me <laughs> and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll read it later. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Danielle. So, um, what can, da can, so Black Label's a, a, a rating sticker. What could it be? What do you want it to be, Joel? 
again, you know, I, I would like something akin to Marvel Max. I would be like, you know, hey, this is the mature in print. This is where we can push boundaries. This is where we can say stuff, mm -hmm. you know, where we can actually make points. And also, uh, maybe it's, you know, where we can put some stuff that's kind of outside the box and a little weird. That's why I like that, like, you know, history of the DC Universe heroes in a black label format written by a guy who doesn't traditionally write comics. I'm like, okay, this is fun. You're experimenting with the artist. You're experimenting with the format. You're expanding what comic books can be as entertainment and reading material. I'd like to see more of that. Okay. Uh, I, I think um, I think I'd like to see... Oh, so I'm sorry. Apparently, Theodore deleted his chat. Here we go. He said his pitch is Nightwing turns up dead. Batgirl has to solve the murder. It would explore some mental health stuff, darker themes, but without unnecessary nudity and swearing. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like, these are the kinds of pitches that Black Label could take up, but then here's the thing, and I like that idea, and I'm glad you brought it up, uh, but for me, a dark pitch for DC is basically just a DC book. It's true. Like, here's a pitch that could work for Black Label in a big, bad way. Sue Dibney is raped and murdered, and then killed. By Dr. Light. Right, <laughs> just saying, like, Identity Crisis is a Black Label book. But, yeah. but it happened in DC continuity. It's, it's available in, in, in bookstores, comic book shops, everywhere. You could get it anywhere. And we had to live with it. Oh, hey, uh, what if Green Arrow killed Prometheus and then went to jail? Right. Like, the, the idea of a dark story is... Is nothing new. It's nothing new, but certainly it doesn't, like, doesn't warrant its own label. Like, and if Black Label is just where we put the dark stuff, then, first of all... Everybody who pushed DC being really dark is still working at DC. So it's not like DC is yep. going to get family friendly and sunny all of a sudden. Nightwing's head was shot by a sniper bullet. Like, yes. And now he's an idiot. So like the these dark themes are still going to be ever present. And if you're going to make dark, like Black Label something else, then you got to have room. Like you, there's... It's just everything. Like, everything can fit under DC right now. If you're going to make an imprint, you better justify the imprint. You better do something different. Heck, I would just like stories with a beginning, middle, and end would be nice. Because obviously a lot of these dark turns are like, yeah, that dark, menacing shit happened. Then we just had to live with it. And yeah. some people liked it and some people didn't like it. And then sometimes it got retconned away. I'd be fine with some dark shit happening if there was a resolution at the end of it. And they're like, and this was the moral of the story. Right. Uh, that's fine, and it works. Of course, the other thing is, anything that happens in major, like, regular continuity is fluid and can get undone. And often does. Yeah. Um, so, at that, at the very least, when you're doing a Black Label book or an Elseworlds book or an out-of-continuity original graphic novel, the stakes are higher because... The, store, the stakes are both higher and lower because the stakes are higher because you know that, or at least you believe that they're, because it's in its own continuity, it can, the things that happen stay that way. But also, you all you know that it's an imaginary story. It doesn't technically happen in the main continuity. Yeah. Um, but if the story is compelling and good, it hopefully it doesn't matter. Like, uh, by the way, Jan Kohler also saying, something I want to see in DC is a true Lovecraft horror book. And as a big Aquaman fan, Aquaman having to deal with Cthulhu would be amazing. There's well, scary shit under the water. I will say, uh, if, if you haven't read The Drowned Earth, a dark kraken emerges and threatens to like unmake reality or destroy the oceans or whatever. It doesn't really do anything, but still, check it out if you're interested in like Lovecraftian horror. Although, uh, you know, there is a morality in that book, and it does pave the way for reality. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you, mm. it, Lovecraft is like nihilistic and apathetic, and nothing matters, and the universe doesn't care about you. And genuinely shitty. Right. Uh, Drowned Earth, it's a Snyder book. That is not how the world works with Scott Snyder. There's, there's no. hope and, and, and love in that universe. And so, self-sacrifice. I quite enjoyed Drowned Earth on that regard, that the good guys didn't win just by punching the bad guys into submission. They won by building bridges and self-sacrifice and compassion. Agreed. I really dug that. So uh, for me, and we'll try to merge our ideas and then work our pitches into that. I want Black Label to be what it was supposed to be, but since that can't happen, yeah. why not make Black Label a prestige format label that says, these are the thing, like, these are books that are, like, this is where we're going to put our original graphic novels. Right. 
Uh, and it doesn't have to be, it, it doesn't mean anything, Black Label. It's just a, a, a seal we put on original graphic novels that we don't rate. All-Star Superman could come out, uh, uh, and All-Star Superman, not the book, but All-Star Superman could kind of come out of this version of Black Label. Easily. But also, so could Batman Damned. And it's more yes. like, you don't know what, it's like a grab bag. I don't know what I'm going to get. All I do know is top-tier talent, original stories, self-contained, and and unrated. And it's up to the author's discretion what like what that means. Right. Uh, now, that does, now what that also shouldn't mean is that it's uneditable, is that it's mm. Brent Morrison. And I don't, I don't have an editor but myself. Like, no, no, no. There needs to be a, a measured, steady, firm hand at the helm reigning in these stories. You need a Karen Berger. You need somebody who really knows talent, story structure, and how to manipulate talent into giving us something that is palatable but also challenging and new and interesting and original. Yeah, you need a shot collar. So, and that's, I think, one of the big things behind Black Label as to why it kind of like, why the legs fell off from under it. Whose brainchild is Black Label? We don't know, and no one took credit for it. I believe Greg Capullo came up with Black Label. Do you know? Black Label is also the name of a whiskey. Yes, it and is. And I do know that Capullo loves his whiskey. And, and he loves his, uh, what is it, uh, Black Label Society, the band. Yes, and he also, like, and he, I'm sure he all, and he's doing a book for Black Label, but he also really wants to see, I, I'm sure he wants to, like, take the collar off. He wants to, like, you know, get left off the chain and do whatever he wants to do. Um, particularly, and he's like, sure, I could do Reborn, but, like, I, why do you want to do a crazy-ass Batman story? Let me draw crazy Batman images. Yeah, and... By the way, that's not to lay blame at someone's feet. I'm just saying, like, where did the idea of lay, of naming a, a, a DC imprint after what is essentially, like, a, a, a label you give to hard, like, liquor to? Mm. You know, you're basically saying with the black label line, you have to be this age in order to buy the book. I wanted to call it DC Thunderbird, but they wouldn't allow me. Thunderbird? <laughs> Ah, Thunderbird wine. <laughs> right. Oh, I was going to call it Wild Turkey DC, but... Oh, that's good, too. Um, by the way, just jumping back into the Super Chats really quick. Cam saying, do an American Alien-style retelling of how Batman and Robin became partners. Make it a real character drama about people learning to cope with trauma. You might argue that all-star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder is kind of that, but with, like, a blunt instrument instead of a scalpel. Yeah, you know, actually tell that story, but good. You know, more more Robin Reckoning, please. Yeah, by the way, All-Star Batman and Robin the Boy Wonder, Black Label Book. Belongs there, should absolutely be that. No doubt. Uh, Ryan Franklin, Black Label was a great idea to capture and focus on the darker elements of the DCU, but I feel as though it will devolve into an Elseworlds banner. <laughs> and if, we, if all we get out of this is Elseworlds back, I'm fine. Because I like Elseworlds, and I think it actually clearly demonstrates to the reader what they're getting into. It's not confusing, but it also is something to get excited about. Likewise. Uh, Tales from Island Z, a legit Lobo Black Label 4-6 to six issue miniseries would be good. Would, or would be, be would rock. Yes. Make it a even, comedy. I don't even like Lobo. But I think the Keith Giffen Lobo stuff would be a great Black Label thing. And that's the other thing that I think Black Label should be. It should be the imprint where we put our darker, edgier stuff. The stuff that actually does push the envelope. More or less, Black Label should also be our banned books label. Yes, our curated, like, here's stuff that we weren't 100% sure about re-releasing, but if we re release it under the Black Label banner, we'll feel more comfortable. Exactly. I think that like, anything could be that. Longbow Hunters could be Black Label. Killing Joke should be Black Label. Like, everything that I think has, it is. I think it is, too. I think they're actually re-releasing it. But, like, by the way, if you do buy any Killing Joke edition, get the Absolute Hardcover. Uh, the Absolute Hardcover should also indicate to you what I really want Black Label to be. Because here's the thing. Uh, Batman Dam got to play with the format. The actual, like, printing of the book is oversized and, it's and more rectangular. It's, it's also thicker, and it has a nice spine. It, it's just, it, it, they play with format. You need to play with that. And Which made our job editing the book a lot harder, but that's first-world YouTuber problems. Right. Uh, but I love that idea. I want them to play with it more. I don't like the Frank Miller horizontal format, but I also, but I like the idea of behind it, which is playing with with, with, with the look of a book and playing with the, the format of comics. If you ever look at this, by the way, there is something that this book does which is incredible. And I want to see them do it, maybe with Black Label. You can't afford to do it, 
with anything but an absolute edition because of the nature of this. But with D, with with Killing Joke, you get the whole book, right? Okay, here it is, and it's got the awful new Brian Boland colors in it. If you flip after that, it moves on to the original Killing Joke mm. with the original colors in it. But get this, by the way, uh, John Higgins has the colors. It's on the original paper that the original oh. Killing Joke was printed on. So the I colors did not know come that. out the way they're supposed to. But you also get nice. this fun, like, old-school paper feel. Black Label should do this. Not the whole book all the way, but rather, like, with two different paper styles. But if, like, you're doing a book and you're like, I really need the grit of the old paper, you print it on the old paper. Mm. If they can do it, they should do it. And not for no reason, but try these 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 try these conventions like push the envelope black label shouldn't just be like i i uh, i put this this png over the cover of this old book we have <laughs> and then i printed it it's just like the old book but it's just got a new like logo on it no do something with it if you're going to reprint killing joke put out two versions from black label the old colors with the old paper and the new colors with the new paper i, I don't know i mean by, i don't make comics i'm not a publisher but like give people a reason but give people a reason to buy it again uh, so, it, but that's another thing. Uh, so, I think if we can merge those two ideas, especially since we know that they can't be like, it's unrated. Yeah. They're not going to do that. They, no. They, and we know they're not going to do that because of the heavy delays. We know that, like, damned, it didn't come out because we knew there was going to be more nudity in it, and they had to change the art. And you Whatever know the because, plans were, it changed. And because of the pushback from the artists, I'm sure it was hard. Oh yeah. To get them to redraw panels or to get their permission to. And by the way, it's nebulous to like how much permission you need from an artist for hire. But the fact is, it's easy. It's harder now to like screw over an artist than it was 30, 50 years ago. Yeah. But like, because then like you know, Bermejo could come out and be like, I don't endorse this. This is bullshit. You changed my art. It's not what I put out. Like you changed everything. Um, also, too, in the age of the internet, it's like, hey, you guys want to see the original pages? Here they are. Right. I'm just uh, going to put them out on Twitter for anyone who wants to see them. So you had to work out a deal with these artists to say, we have to change it. You have to change it. I need new versions of it from you, or at least permission to give it to other artists that we have who can change it. Like casting a stupid shadow over it or, you know, like covering it with a conveniently potted plant or something. <laughs> Why is there so much fog in this new issue? <laughs> Now, and that's the thing, like, as a comic book fan, I'm used to the convenient fog or yeah. smoke forever. Like, I've never not experienced it. So to see it again, I'm like, right on, that's, yeah, that's, how else are they going to print this book? But to know they could have done it and they had to cover it, that sucks. It's a little lame. Um, we're going to get into these super chats and then we're going to pitch our books. Uh, Mr. Giggles, hey guys, guess who's back? Coke Zero for life. Right on, Mr. Giggles. Cheers. Uh... Christian Ariza, uh, as a fan of Deathstroke, I feel like he doesn't get enough credit having a darker backstory than Batman with a lot of potential for even darker stories. Joel, I'm sure that you agree with that. Uh, yeah, and in fact, again, you want to talk about Black Label, what Christopher Priest is doing should definitely be Black Label. I would say it's the only DC book out right now that really should only be read by adults because there are some fucked up things that happen in that mainline Deathstroke book. But again, I think much like Jimmy Palmiotti with Jonah Hex, that's fine. No one's really reading this who's not already a fan. I can just write whatever I want. Exactly. And that's the thing. Like, if no one's looking at it and it comes out, then it's pretty much then, then, it, then you can play ball. Right? Like, then it's, it's good to go. Um, and they have. And so if Batman Dam just didn't catch the fire that, like, if it had just sold well, and instead of, like, catching the attention to people, it would have just been a book. It wouldn't be a problem. We'd be talking about this later. Yep. Um, Cam, hot pitch. Every Black Label book should have a ridiculous two-foot-long fold-out page like All-Star Batman and Robin. Because screw <laughs> it, why not? Um, <laughs> you know what's funny? I, I guarantee you the only reason that got away with it because two people worked on that book. Frank Miller said, I want to do it, and Jim Lee's like, I want to draw it. And that's yep. how it got through. Um, there's no way a publisher wants to make those awful oh, pages. Yeah. Oh, definitely. And Mr. Google's salad didn't have a Coke. Didn't Coke have a Black Label? It did indeed. Yes. Right here. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Joel... I know you've been champing at the bit. What what do you what do you what do you want to put out from DC's black label? The new black label. New black label. The the EE -E black label. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> black label XL. Right? 
But uh, yeah, I had a couple pitches here. At least two of these are ones that I mentioned in other episodes, but I actually fleshed out and tried to like write into something that I think would fit Black Label. Nice, because that's where this whole thing came from, by the way. This uh, this month of Elseworlds, we're doing like redemption and re revisiting old episodes and being like, here's what we promised you about a couple years ago, but didn't get a yep. chance to do anything with. Most definitely. Uh, the first one I call uh, Our Man and the Dope Sick Nation. And if you're a fan of the Vice show Dope Sick Nation, that's where I took a lot of reference from. Basically, we check on in with Rex Tyler Jr., the son of the original uh, Rex Tyler, who has inherited the suit. But more importantly than that, he's inherited the super drug that gives uh, Our Man his powers, but only for an hour, Miraclo. Mm -hmm. Oh, nice. Good use of Miraclo. Miraclo. So he's inherited the costume. He's inherited that. And uh, Rex Tyler, our man, he's a joke in the superhero community. They don't let him join the Justice League. They think he sucks. They're like, well, you're a liability. You only have powers for an hour. What if our mission goes longer than an hour? Right. No super team wants him, so he's actually taken to the streets of Florida, of all places, where there, of course, in real life is a massive opioid epidemic. Okay. And it's killing people, and there's a brand new drug that's hit the street that is incredibly addictive, and wouldn't you know it, it's a lot like Miraclo. It gives you an incredibly dangerous high, but only for an hour. And no superhero is dealing with this problem because they're too busy fighting costume criminals. They're too busy stopping bank robberies. So Rex Tyler takes this upon himself to try and deal with this problem and why, yes, the evil pharmaceutical company that's making this and pushing it on doctors and everything, a la the opioids, yes, it's a corrupted version of Miraclo. Of course it is. Of course, yeah. That's how it has to work, yeah. Why wouldn't it be? And it's a story that I want to take a look at addiction and problems that superheroes just don't fight and just don't deal with in comics anymore. Mm -hmm. And also, I wanted to deal with the idea, too, that for Rex being a superhero, that's an addiction, too. That's yeah. destructive in his life. Right. That's a really cool idea. Hey, listen, like, it's a great opportunity to uh, to tackle addiction and also do it through the lens of a superhero story. I think that's... Uh, yeah. It definitely f uh, features the, the black label themes that we're going for here. Mm -hmm. And it would be a great way, too, to work in other heroes who have maybe had drug problems before, like maybe uh, our man ends up finding Roy Harper in this universe. Because, again, we can do whatever we want, and it's not main continuity. He's still doing drugs, and our man's like, what the hell, man? You were a sidekick. You were a titan. You're a hero, and now you're shooting up in an alley? What the hell? Right, right. And so he takes him in and tries to rehab him and everything. And we see like the transformation of like how hard it is for people to quit and how easy it is to fall back again. If you've watched the show Dope Sick Nation on Vice, it's really good. OK. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good. Good show, by the way. Yeah. Um, the, for me, you know, Black Label could be a place for it should be a place where it's like original graphic novel stories and reprintings of controversial stories like we talked about. A couple mm. of those stories that I'd love to see revisited, reprinted, and maybe getting another chance at life, another shot in the arm. I'd like to see, like, what was it? Uh, White Knight got the chance to be a black label book immediately, maybe, but, but adding a little bit more, like I said, to give it some kind of legitimacy, maybe, like, justifying selling the damn thing. That this is high-minded. Yeah, put Denny O'Neill's hard-traveling heroes in there. That's what I'm saying. I want to see, like, the Green Arrow, Green Lantern, her speedy heroine story in a graphic novel published by Black Label um, with some sketches, some original script notes, some kind of, like, behind-the-scenes back and forth. Maybe a lovely forward. You know what they don't do anymore, Ooh. really? The forwards and afterwards by people who worked on the damn thing. That's true. You know Denny O'Neill would love to write a forward. Oh, no doubt. And that's not the end of Denny O'Neill. I'd love to see, like, a retread. I'd like to see a, a revisit of, like, Venom, for example. Uh, Batman Venom. Another story about addiction and drug use and everything like that. Um, Make it part of a collection, the DC Tackles Drugs collection right, on Black DC Label. Drugs. I think that might be a little more controversial than they want it to be, but uh, but I like the idea of them tackling you know real world issues and in a real like mature way. Um, Tons of Titan stories too. Again, Titans was the first comic that dealt with Runaways by saying, "Hey kids, if your home life is really bad, don't go back home." Right. Uh, I would love to see them reprint and like maybe recolor but like I, i'm really iffy about that uh, a death in the family yeah there's another big one um i'd love to see emerald twilight maybe mm. the, the the ron mars era there's a couple of stories in there that are like kind of edgy and cool that like maybe with a with with another pass might have actually found new life or maybe if it was engineered towards an original graphic novel format it might have actually worked a little bit less funny and juvenile 
Um, and of course, Identity Crisis, I think, could have also become a Black Label book. Like oh, no I said, doubt, like, no doubt. But because it's part of DC canon, like, you know what? Like, whatever. I it's mean, hard but the fact to. is, the fact that Three Jokers is canon and also Black Label means that Black Label doesn't mean anything. So Yeah, it's true. That blows my goddamn mind. I know. Um, Taylor Petcher has a good one. He says, I want to do a Rene Rontoya, Montoya question book by Greg Rucka and Derek Robertson. I don't have a whole pitch, but I just want to see that. And also, it would be a Huntress team up. It's true. Just put that team together and they'll give you gold because clearly they had years worth of ideas they never got to write. A question book lends itself to a black label story un- unquestionably. No joke. There. Instantly. Tales from Island Z, Darkseid black label, maybe a fight with his dad. Darkseid, yeah. I mean, New Gods black label book? That's just, a, that's just a pitch on itself. Although, I guarantee you Mr. Miracle will be a black label book. Yes. In fact, I think it was supposed to be. Oh, Much that in White Knight they were supposed to be. There you go. And Sam Anderson, Arkham psychiatrists using their knowledge of the villains to survive a mass breakout one night, each issue focusing on a doctor and villain. Also Neat. would be cool. Called Arkham Breakout. Uh, Love it. So, yeah. Uh, what else we got, Joel? All right. So here's another one that I mentioned before but didn't really flesh out till now. I call this one JSA Doctor Fate Dementia. Okay is what I call this one. And it's basically Kent Nelson. He spent his entire adult life serving the Lord of Order Naboo. But uh, even though his body is willing, his mind is slowly deteriorating with age. He has Alzheimer's, but he also has amazing power uh, of magic to warp universes. And because of that, he's becoming a danger to himself and those around them. Mm-hmm. The The Trinity is sent in to deal with this problem, but he doesn't recognize any of them. So they figure, damn, if we got to get through to him, we got to go find his old friends on the JSA. And so they got to go to the retirement homes and wherever (laughs) else old people are to get them. Mm -hmm. And this kind of becomes a battle of like the greatest boomer generation and the new generation and them kind of blaming each other for what's going on here, where it's like, you know, why? Why haven't you been watching your friend Kent Nelson? You know, didn't you think this would be a problem letting a Lord of Order in and doing all this other stuff and they're like oh we're sorry uh shouldn't you have been looking up on him shouldn't you have been looking up at all of us you just stuck us in homes and retirement communities as old superheroes when we weren't good anymore right a generational conflict story is like ripe for the picking and definitely would resonate with readers at this point i think that's absolutely a great idea I think that would be solid. And then it gets into the whole like, okay, well, we got to get the helmet off him first off, which is going to be really difficult. And then we got to pick a new Dr. Fate. And we kind of also make it like a what 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 choices we make that impact the next generation. And, you know, how do we uh, put right what once went wrong, that sort of thing. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, certainly you need here's the thing. You need to have those tentpole characters to sell the line. You can't just have like. Uh, you can't have Black Label be like, it's crazy, pick it up. I promise a Dr. Fate story is going to sell. I yeah, promise yeah. A, a Martian Manhunter story that's mature and has, like, dicks in it is going to be awesome. Like, mm. it, it, you got to get them to buy the damn thing first. That's, that, that's why you lead with JLA or JSA on front right. of it. Right, and that's the thing. Like, I would love to see, like, maybe a, maybe a revisit of, the of um, what was it called? Uh, Tower of Babel. Um, yeah. Or, or something more... A, like more original something like it, it can't just be this is where we stick the books that came out 20 20 to 40 years ago that mm-hmm. you know get new life uh it's also a place where like original stories can come and blossom um ooh, although a serious house and serious earth needs to come out soon you gotta get that, that would, book going um, that'd be a solid one it, it, yeah it, it's interesting do you have any um do you have any female empowerment stories yes i do actually and i'm quite proud of this one actually well, let's hear it so I call this one the wall journals mm, okay. is what I call oh, this no. one. Yeah. Okay. And it deals with Aubrey Waller, the now adult daughter of task force X's founder, Amanda Waller. Her mother has just passed away. She's cleaning up her house and she finds Amanda Waller's secret journal where she wrote about her entire career, starting out as a civil servant to working for the government to eventually working on, uh, what is it task force x and it's filled with all of her most deepest thoughts and feelings and again it's like you know first loves you know what was her sex life at that time you know did she ever feel bad about what she did to these criminals did she ever you know uh falter in this did she ever want to do anything else you know why why did she end up alone who was this girl's uh father etc yeah. etc and you know we build this into a bigger story as well too of being like well why did i only find this journal now wait is my mother trying to tell me something from beyond the grave right 
Is this, am I, is she still manipulating things? From beyond the, and the big twist at the end is like, ah, I was fucking with your daughter. I'm not actually dead, but I am dying. And I want you to become the new uh, head of task force X. I want you to take up this job for me now that you've read my journal and understand a little bit more about me and always have the hanging question of like, was any of that real? Enough of it was real. Yeah. <laughs> Just enough to get you to listen to me. To find, to find where I was hit out. That was your final test. I've actually been grooming you your whole life. You just didn't know it. Right. Oh. And all the times I was cruel and being a shitty mother, this was actually just part of my far greater ploy. And ultimately, the daughter will decide, do I want to live this life that my mother lived? Or do I want to, like, strike out on my own and, you know, stop the cycle? Right. And you leave it there. You don't even find out. Like, yep. Or at the very least, you leave it where you can interpret it one way or another way. Yeah, that's where you leave it. That's it's absolutely, Sal. You read my mind. Nice. Greg DeMage saying, Superman falls early, but lands on Themyscira, where Steve Trevor and other men are slaves. Steve hides the baby and raises it to fight World War. Uh, a Wonder Woman and uh, Wonder Woman and Superman war for years. Hmm. Or war for years. There you go. Interesting. Superman landing on Themyscira is like, where is that story? You'd be shocked. He's been a Green Lantern. He's been everything else. You're I shocked. I'm shocked that isn't an Elseworld story. That's the kind of thing they would have done at least in 1995, if not yeah. now. It's unbelievable they haven't done that yet. Um, but yeah, so uh, those are those are just a couple of like that scratches the surface. I think more and more will like the opportunities arise. The funny thing is for me, any stories that like might come up, come for me could be pitches in the main book. It's true. Like the, the 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 Waller story, I think, is like the most black label for me because it's like it's a future story. It takes place in a yes. timeline. You don't need to like age everybody up. Um, you can't. You, you know, you're not going to set it in the future's end universe or something. God no. You know, you you actually could do that and 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 explore it. And you could do kind of like a Daredevil end of day story where it's like we don't really we kind of we kind of check in a little bit on a couple of characters, but for the most part, like we're not. It's not going to be like Batman's not going to hijack this book. We're not going to turn it into something else. Like this is what this is what it is. Yep. Um, Joshua Wright, I want an uber violent Wonder Woman story in ancient Greece. Mm. Right? Why the hell not? Wonder Woman Arena. Yeah, I know that uh, Wonder Woman was supposed to be. Uh, I know. I know that they were thinking about a black label book for her. For me, the other thing was, I remember like people using Wonder Woman as an example of like, oh no, I don't want to see Wonder Woman naked or whatever. Out of all the DC heroes, Wonder Woman being naked is the most sensible one, since she lives on an island of women and has a Grecian sensibility. Yeah. It's frustrating that you're not going to get that. Although, if you look really closely at Dark Knight 3, The Master Race, she's topless in that book. Um, yes. But don't tell Warner Brothers. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> uh, Taylor Pester, knowing that Batwoman has trouble holding a solo series, I think her character lends well to Black Label. Plus, that might be able to bring J.F. Williams the third uh, at least to draw it. Ah, uh, that'd be nice. I'd like that a lot. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, Elegy is basically a Black Label book. Right? No, you're absolutely right. Like, uh, I remember reading that and being like, is this even in continuity? <laughs> it doesn't look like it is. Yeah, I'm sure it wasn't planned to be. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for me, I, you know, my pitches are more about, like, what can you do with what was there? And I want to see yeah. it. And, I, and Joel's going to roll out with the new stuff. Um, I will come up with some more Black Label p pitches as we go. But for now, for me, I just wanted to see a couple of these books get new life and come back into the forefront. Maybe with like a spit polish, an afterword, an intro, script notes, sketches. Uh, you know, for me, putting out Killing Joke back when Black Label was supposed to be an unrated thing, you get the original like uh, Ber um, Boland art back in there. Yeah. Make it a director's cut version with all the all the all the really negative, tor horrible, juicy details. Um, and I feel like there's probably a lot more of those. For oh, no, no doubt. We knew that White Knight was supposed to have them, and they sure as hell ain't in this book saying Black maybe Label include, on it. Maybe include some essays, too. That'd be fun. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, at the, uh, you know what's cool? This is, this is more talking about like uh, my, my, my education background, but like literary criticism was a thing that um, if you ever like read the, the, the great – you know, literary critics of yesteryear, uh, they would write these, like, long 20 to 40 to 70 to 100 page prose stories, or not stories, but more like essays that were just total indictments and critiques of other people's criticism mm -hmm. of either work or criticism. 
I would and now love, it's all on YouTube. I would, yeah, exactly. I would love to see that brought back or brought into the comic world. It doesn't have to be graphic. You don't have to draw it. I'm just saying, like, I would love to see a collection of essays by Grant Morrison. I'd love to see a respo- a, a book that is a collection of response of like question response analysis and essay reaction of like Frank Miller. Grant Morrison, or absolutely, you know, any or or Azarello versus somebody, uh, you know, uh, Bendis, you know, just just any number of prominent comic book creators. I love it. I love it to death. And if you want it to be high minded and adult oriented, which we do, that's high minded and adult oriented. Yeah, that like, hey, here's a crazy idea for Black Label. There isn't a picture in it. It's just, it's just essays written by the the people who write the books you write. And that being said, that's death. And it ain't gonna sell. That's no, why no, it you. Is. But that's why you sell it for cheap, or you, or you make it like a back digital, up, exclusive. digital exclusive. Because like, the fact is, I mean, like, no one watches interviews with creators on YouTube, and you don't have to read a damn thing. You just, just, Which you just that does and, my friggin' head in, because I love creator interviews. Well, yeah, no one wants to know like where the stuff they love comes from. Which, for me, I don't. When it comes to story structure, like, I don't care about like who Yoda was before he meets Luke on Dagobah, but like. I'd love to know what went into a creator's head. I'd love to just, even if no cameras, no microphones, I'd love to sit with Frank Miller and just ask him questions about Dark Knight Returns. And just I guess we're just wired him. differently, you and me, Sal. I know. I think a lot of people know they would like to see that, even if they don't, if they're, if they're not conscious of it. People would love yeah. to. I think they, if they had the opportunity, they would, they would, they would freak out. You know, um, certainly I've seen it; those opportunities squandered when I see people like go up to like Dan Slott or some other character creator who they disagree with or they love and be like, here's my book. And then they sign it and they go, bye. I'm like, whoa, they're right there. Yeah, I know. I know. So that'd be really cool. Um, but, uh, but that's it. We're out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you so much for being out with us. Um, before I wrap up, I do want to jump into the super chats because a couple more left. Um, Heartless Fang, would it be cool to see Bats in a kind of Lex Luthor role, the Waynes in Metropolis instead of Gotham? Elseworlds hmm. book. That, that's another pitch. We should do like Elseworlds. Bring back Elseworlds. Just, just dear DC, bring back Elseworlds. Yeah. Um, and Keith one shot a hero transitions, uh, MTF and deals with these changes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Massively. Yeah. That's that's a great pitch for it. Most definitely. Seriously. That's I mean, I think and I think that's coming. I don't think it's I don't think we're here yet, but I think it's on its way. I think you will see it in our lifetime. You will see that book one day. I mean, had we never thought we'd have such a positive, forward-thinking Muslim hero at Marvel, and now we do, I bet we'll have a trans hero in our lifetime. I literally, there are there are Kamala Khan Halloween costumes in Which, Target and Walmart. Warms my goddamn heart. It's crazy. I was like, I can't believe we're seeing this. It's amazing. And apparently Spider-Gwen Ghost Spider is going to be huge this year after that movie. I am not surprised. Um but yeah, we want to thank you all so much for hanging out with us. And of course, let us know your uh, DC Black Label pitch in the description below or in the comment section below this video. Uh, I'll, but... I'll, I'll do that. I still have like several. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. We have to do a sequel to That's the That's all right. But uh, listen, uh, before you go, go to patreon.com slash comic pop and check out the sister show to this show, One Shots, which is the spinoff show from here, Elseworlds Exchange. Uh, and find out more stuff about here at Comic Pop. We, we do a lot of stuff over there. Um, mm-hmm. And if this is your first time with visiting this show, be sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel and click the bell for more notifications and hang out with us then. We'll see you then uh, next week with another episode of Elseworlds Exchange. Amazingly enough, keep doing these every week. 250 shows. I don't remember how many episodes there are. It was 150. We're almost 150. at... We're you know almost what? at 250, the original Pokemon. I was thinking of, uh, of of Off the Rack. We're at like 255 or something. I don't know. Oh, wow. But it's nuts. But oh, thank you so much for watching and hanging out with us. And we'll see you next time. I'm Sal. I'm Joel. So long. Bye-bye.